um, one foundational thought, and that is, this comes from a, a guy called Harold Best, he says that, <coughs> uh, if I let, me, let me quote him here, we are, as human beings, continually worshipping. We're continually worshipping. So it's not like sometimes we're worshipping and sometimes we're not worshipping. Sometimes uh, we are um, engaged in acts of worship and other times we're in just like secular, regular, normal, mundane acts. What Harold says, which echoes scripture, is, this is not Harold the elder here, Harold Ball, this is Harold Best, uh, uh, also a very wise uh, gentleman. Um, so we're always worshipping. The only thing that changes is the object of our worship. So what are we worshipping or how are we engaged in worship? So we are always worshipping. <clears throat> this, this is what uh, King David said back in Psalm 34, verse 1 to 3. He said, uh, based on this same wisdom, which is throughout Scripture of us continually worshipping, he says, I will bless the Lord, this is Yahweh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, which means not just his spirit, but his very being, the essence of who he is, makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I'm really looking forward to unpacking that. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So part of this, in fact, let's pray first and then we'll, uh, we'll get stuck into the psalm. Father God, I want to thank you for this new year. Even though we, we kind of um, mark these times, uh, it's really just another day uh, in which you are still the sovereign God and King over all of the universe. You're no respecter of our Days and, and times and festivals, uh, you are Lord over everything. Um, but as it is a marker for us, we just want to thank you for last year. Thank you that we made it through last year. Thank you for this year and for this uh, another opportunity today, Sunday, uh, another week, another month and another year to learn more about you, grow in you, grow in the likeness of your son Jesus grow in our love for one another and for the world around us, grow in our holiness and in our love for the things that you love, to grow in our love and care and compassion for the lost, for the poor and for the vulnerable. Father, as we think about your scriptures today and especially this psalm about worship, help us, Father, please, to orient our entire lives around you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So one time um, Jesus says, it's recorded in John 4, he says, an hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, the Father wants such people to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And so what does it look like for us to worship God in this kind of way? Scripture helps us here as well. Paul, in fact, <clears throat> uh, he goes into this in a little bit of detail in Colossians 3. He says, if you have been raised with Christ, so same, he's identifying the same people that Jesus was identifying, those who are in him. If you have been raised in Christ, seek the things above where Christ is. Sit at the right hand of God, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. I mean, we could just stop there. I said, that's an easy one. Set your mind on the things above, not on earthly things. And by that, he's not saying don't care about the world, don't care about your neighbor. He's not saying don't care about your job, don't care about your family, don't care about the world around us. Don't care. He's not saying those things. He's saying set your mind on the things that are above. Have what is most weighty, most worthy, most important to you, not based on material things, but based on and in heavenly things. In fact, based in Christ himself. And he goes on, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
So he's trying to build this case that we're always worshipping, always worshipping. When you are at your desk or workstation or on your phone uh, working, you're worshipping. When you are hanging out with your family, you are worshipping. When you are sleeping, you are worshipping. When you eat, you are worshipping. When you open up your wallet, you are worshipping. What you do with your eyes is, is an act of worship. What you say with your mouth is an act of worship. We are continually worshipping and all of these things show our worship, how we, how we use our lives. When we say worship, we're not just talking about four songs on a Sunday, uh, singing and raising our hands. That's not all of worship. That is an act of worship, but you don't stop worshipping when you stop singing. You continue to worship. When we walk out those doors, we continue to worship. How we live our lives is an act of worship. How we speak is an act of worship. Even how we direct our thinking and our affections is an act of worship. Everything is an act of worship. And Paul is saying here, uh, we don't worship how we used to worship because we've actually died to worshiping in the way that we used to worship and we've been raised in Christ. And he's like, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death what belongs to the earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient, and you once walked in these things when you were living in them. So he's saying that what you desire, how you desire things, is an act of worship. He's saying greed is an act of worship. He says greed is idolatry. Greed, greed is like having an idol. In those days, they would literally like whittle or carve or, or manufacture idols and worship these idols. And Paul is kind of abstracting it from the material things that were easily identifiable as objects of worship. And he's saying, oh, even just being greedy is itself an idol, is itself your act of worship. It's like how, how we engage in uh, sex is an act of worship. So we've put to death the gratification of the flesh. We've put to death greed. We've put to death idolatry. We've, we have rejected everything and every worship other than the right worship of God. So treat as, treating others as brothers and sisters is an act of worship. Generosity is an act of worship. And he goes on and says, but now put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, filthy language from your mouth. Don't lie to one another. Since you've put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, you're being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. So as you learn more about the character and the nature of God, he is making us more into his own likeness. And he has no deception in him. He has no malice. He has no filthy language. He has no slander. It says, in Christ is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. So you're a new creation. The old is gone and now we're made in the image of God so that we would reflect his glory in the world, reflect his image in the world, we go about our lives reflecting, radiating the image of God by showing what is most weighty, most worthy to us with how we speak, how we act, how we love. And it goes on and it says, Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion. So he said, get rid of anger and malice, uh, lust, sexual immorality, put on compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. And above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule in your hearts. And be thankful, so let the word of Christ dwell richly among you, 
in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So what does this tell us about worship? It tells us that you are holy. Holiness is not about climbing some sort of moral threshold. This is how it's used kind of in the, in the culture. Oh, you think you're holier than me. Or you have a holier-than-thou attitude. And so holiness kind of has this stigma to it. Oh you, think you're, oh, you think you're the holy one. Actually, yes, because you don't understand what holiness is. I'm not holy because I'm better. I'm not holy because I'm more moral. I'm not holy because I've achieved something. I'm not holy because I've climbed, again, some sort of moral threshold and got o- a ladder and got over the moral threshold into holiness. Holiness is being plucked out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light. Holiness is being set apart, literally being set apart. It's being taken out of death and being brought to life. No dead person can bring themselves to life. Only if a third party actually intervenes or does something. And this is, this is our only boast. Yeah, we are holy, but that's not a reflection of my goodness. It's a reflection of God's goodness. And he's saying, now that you are holy, act holy. Now that you've been set apart, live as people who are set apart. Now that you are a new creation, orient your affection, orient your desires, orient your worship to Christ and Him alone. What does it tell us? It says, because you are loved, love. Because you're forgiven, forgive. Because you've been brought into unity with the Father and the Son, pursue unity with one another. These are all acts of worship. Because Jesus was humbled, we humble ourselves. Because he treated us with kindness, gentleness, patience, we are kind and gentle and patient with each other. Because he acted upon us with such grace, we respond to him with a life marked by grace and overflowing in thanksgiving to the giver of the same grace. Because we belong to Jesus, we express our thanks with our voice, with our singing, and with our lives. So again, we don't want to reduce worship to just singing, but it is an aspect of worship. One aspect of worship is when we gather, and we we lift up our hearts and our voices to the King who loves us. Which brings us back to our psalm. I will bless the Lord at all times. Bless means to speak well of. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes us boast in the Lord. So again, I'm not saying, oh yeah, I'm holy. Therefore, I am better. Therefore, I am standing on my own righteousness. No, he says, my boast, the boast of my entire life, my whole soul, body, mind, and spirit is only in Yahweh, is only in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You know this uh, word magnify, we use this word. Um, It's not just for like old hymns and songs from the kind of 60s and 70s, magnify the Lord. Uh, This word magnify, we use it. It means to make small things appear large. So you might use a, magnus, a, a microscope to magnify. Or you can give large items, like, cele- like stars and planets, uh, can give them greater detail as if you were much closer, like with a telescope. And so you can either magnify something by taking something that's very, very small and hard to see and, and kind of blowing it up and making it larger, or something that's very distant Magnifying is seeing great detail in the distant as if you are up close. And I love how Piper puts it like this. He says, the whole duty of the Christian can be summed up in this. Feel, think, and act in a way that will make God look as great as he really is. Be a telescope for the world of the infinite starry wealth of the glory of God. This is the thing that David, King David, is welcoming us to do with him. 
It says, this is our job to magnify the Lord. We don't make him larger, right? We can't, when it says magnify the Lord, it doesn't mean make him bigger. It doesn't mean that, that he is far away and we are making him closer. We don't make him larger, we don't make him closer. We simply put him on display with our lives. How do we magnify the Lord? We consider his character. We consider his love as if we're looking through a, a microscope and, and drilling into the small detail and making it large in our lives. Or like, again, the, something that is so great, so otherly, so wonderful, looking through a uh, telescope as if we were up close and then seeing the detail in the magnificent. But then, in turn, we are putting that on display to the world. That's how we magnify the Lord. That's what we do when we sing. That's what we do when we love our neighbor. That's what we do when we choose generosity over greed. That's what we do when we choose the thing that pleases God versus the thing that gratifies the flesh. That's what we do when we work as if for the Lord and not for man. That's what we do when we forgive. That's what we do when we submit to his lordship. That's what we do when we sing. We magnify him. Again, we don't make him bigger. He is magnificent. And we magnify his glory in our lives. So our being worshippers is primary uh, for us. It informs us and it's displayed in how we relate to God, how we sing to him, how we relate to him, how we submit to him, how we defer to him, and how we see ourselves so we are holy, we are set apart, but not because of our like, intrinsic righteousness, but because of imputed righteousness. Jesus' perfect life credited to us and how we relate to one another, how we look after one another, how we relay with our words the glories, how we magnify the Lord to one another with our words and how we magnify the Lord to one another and to a watching world with our lives. This is how we're going to be worshippers. So, our question for 2023 is, not will we be worshippers, because you are always worshipping. So you don't have to answer the question, will you be worshippers? That's already been answered. Yes, you are going to worship all the time in 2023. Every minute you are worshipping. with every word you are worshipping, with, with every dollar you are worshipping, with every swipe you are worshipping, with every thought you are worshipping. I'm not saying this to kind of heap guilt onto you at all. I am echoing the words of, of um, David. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's say with him, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for these words. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness to us in Jesus. They don't treat us according to our, our words <coughs> or our actions. You treat us according to Christ's perfection. You're so good to us. Would you help us this year uh, to build or continue to build on the foundation that you have laid in us with your gospel, with your spirit, your sanctifying work uh, through your community here at City Light, through our family and our friends, that we would become more like Jesus we would worship you, that your praise would be continually in our mouths, in our wallets, in our minds, in the way that we treat each other in a, in a watching world, in the way that we love, in every way. Father, help us as people who are continually worshipping to continually worship the one 
worthy of our worship. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.